um, change, if you change your mind, you want to go to a different session and catch that, perfectly fine. Um, but Rosa Marty and I are here to talk uh, about some of the work that we're doing at CSU um, with games. So um, I'll go first. We're going to totally switch this up. And I'm going to go first, talking about mobile learning, some of my experiences with mobile learning, and what I'm doing here at the university. So that's kind of where we're at. Welcome. And if you, like I said, if you, you feel like you want to go somewhere else, feel free to do so. <laughs> All right. So I want to talk a little bit about augmentation, augmented gaming, and augmented learning. And um, since this is future visions, I'm taking the liberty of not backing up anything I'm saying, okay? And looking out into the future and thinking about, um, just sort of reflecting on some of the things that I think about um, and get excited about when I look at augmentation and where it could take us. Uh, and um, I probably am not visioning as far as the opening speaker when it comes to uh, goggles, uh, uh, augmented reality goggles and those sorts of things, although I, I, I try to read a little bit about those and keep up on those. It's not where I do most of my work. Most of my work is done in the area of learning. I'm an a, um, associate professor here in the School of Education. So I like to think about learning and how we, we learn uh, and what technology can do and how it can augment uh, our experiences. So um, an interesting thing happened to me. I, I was at uh, DrupalCon. Uh, if you're familiar with Drupal, it's a software application for developing websites. And there was a presenter there. Uh, it was actually one of the keynote uh, speakers. He talked about when, uh, when we are mobile. And this got, got me to thinking. Um, and he put up a graph similar to this uh, that talked about if we have our laptops out, um, we are connecting to the internet at, at much different times and in much different patterns than uh, we do on our smartphones. And um, the connectivity sort of was presented like this. Um, we spend um, big blocks of time on our laptops connected to the internet. Um, may not be active connections, but we're connected. And then smartphones we have on us all the time. So uh, we have these patterns of coming on, going off, coming on, going off, coming on, going off. Much different patterns. And he was talking about this in, in relation to, to marketing and design. And I started thinking about it in relation to learning and some of the, the work that I do. So the way I related it was that formal education looks similar to a laptop. Okay, we get on in big chunks of time. We sit down and listen to lectures, just like you guys are doing right now. And self-directed learning is somewhat different. Okay, we're always on, at, we're on at a period of times and then we, we do some work and then we're off and then we get back on. Uh, it, mi it mimics much more, I think, smart mo smartphone uh, or mobile device type connectivity. So I started to think about design of um, educational tools and how that uh, would relate to, to some of this information. The other thing that was uh, interesting to me was that was presented was the um, bandwidth projections and the desktop versus mobile, mobile internet connection users and how the bandwidth is going to um, eventually eclipse, uh, the mobile bandwidth is going to eclipse hardwired bandwidth and users are going to eclipse them as well. So we're going to have a lot more people on mobile devices. So I started thinking about what that meant uh, to design and learning again. And one thing that it means is that if you're designing for a desktop or a laptop, you have um, a bigger screen area. So you have to think about uh, design elements and how to put your content on a smaller screen. 
And if you were at the opening session, um, he actually talked about this, you know, when you talk about your smartphone, he talked about that as a disadvantage, it, it, that you don't have as much screen area. And it was interesting at DrupalCon, they were actually talking about it in a, a much more positive way. In other words, we tend to crowd the large desktop screen or the laptop screen with all sorts of information extraneous to the user. So what they're finding is that if you're forced to design for mobile first, you have to get to know your customer much better and deliver content um, that's specific to the customer. So there's some examples. Here's Expedia, right? This is their desktop experience. Um, overwhelming, lots of information. Um, who knows uh, what they're trying to communicate here. Uh, you obviously can bore down and, and find what you need. But, you know, is it really taking care of the customer? You relate that to something like this, which is their mobile experience. Okay, very specific information that people are looking for while they're on the road or while they're traveling, looking for hotels. Here's another one, Southwest Airlines. Lots of information, again, okay, they studied their customer, found out exactly what they, um, what the customer needed, uh, and they came up with something like this, so see if you can tell the difference between the two. All right. Much more easy, uh, it's easier to digest. Okay, so just in case you didn't get it, let's go back. Here's the first, um, the desktop experience. Here's the mobile experience. We're starting to see this um, in education, which is my field. So here's Khan Academy's experience on the desktop. I would say not as cluttered as, as, uh, as Expedia and some of the other examples I gave, but let's see if we can see the difference. Okay, here's their mobile experience. Right. Again, thinking about the customer, thinking about the client and designing for that. Here's another educational experience, um, a, a site that deals with anatomy. Uh, lots of uh, things you can bore down through, and, and now we see something that looks like this on the mobile experience. Okay, so how do we design for mobile? Um, how do we, what do we start thinking about um, when it comes to mobile? Um, and if we d design for mobile first, um, does it actually enhance um, our user's experience, and, and what we're seeing in a lot of these examples here is that it does. So, you know, when you start thinking about mobile, it gets, it, in education and learning, it becomes very intriguing um, because you get something that looks like this. The world just, just opens up with possibilities of what you can do uh, with mobile devices. Um, we have uh, vibrations, uh, we have motion sensors, multi-touch screens. We have cameras, dual cameras, location detection, QR codes, all sorts of um, ways that we can uh, build experiences based on, um, based on these things and deliver content that's relevant to the user. So when I, when I look at this screen, I mean, I, I know this screen is overwhelming. Um, it, there's lots of stuff here. But I look at it and get excited um, because I, I can start thinking of creative uh, examples of how we can augment materials um, and augment education um, to make it more relevant. Um, you know, there, there's also, uh, this is just, a, this was a headline that I picked up just uh, yesterday, actually. They're, you know, designing new microchips that will tell you whether you're indoors or outdoors which floor of a building you're on. So, you know, right now, although, although the, some of this stuff is very crude, um, as far as location goes, it's getting a lot more um, detailed. So just, just to give an example, uh, here's Im image recognition. And um, we'll see if this YouTube video plays here. I'm Willie Argo, senior outfielder from Davenport, Iowa. 
Welcome to my virtual day. Well, being drafted is a great honor. Um, you know, the fact that somebody thinks that you are capable of playing at the next level. Okay, so augmenting baseball cards. Now, did, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but did you see the kid's face light up when that happened? Really neat, okay, really neat. And by the way, that tool is available now. You can download the app, and it takes about two minutes to create your own augmentation. So, you know, if you, I, I start thinking, okay, if you have a textbook <laughs> and you're using it in your class, you can snap a picture of something, uh, take a picture with your iPhone or your smartphone of a picture in the textbook and then augment that t picture with a video. It's, it's literally that easy now to do some of this stuff. Right? So if you have your smartphones, I'll put this, maybe put this image back up at the end, but if you had your smartphone, you could download the app and point it up here at the screen and uh, you would see fish floating around on this particular object. All right? So you get to see really, uh, you get to see some neat augmentations. But you know, to me, it's, it's not about fish, it's about Okay, how can we start to use these tools for learning? Um, here's a really great, and I don't know if many of you have seen this, but this is in uh, um, South Korea. And this is in, this, in their subway system. And this is a virtual shopping, or a grocery store. Right, and you can see the uh, young man there with his smartphone, and he's waiting for his subway. And as he's waiting, he's using QR codes to scan uh, the uh, groceries that he wants to be delivered to his house, okay? And then they uh, deliver those groceries to him that night. All right, so we're starting to see um, very interesting applications, right? Um, you know, these, these things can be worked into simple examples like uh, the textbook augmentation or the, uh, um, the uh, sports card augmentation, but they're also being worked into open-ended challenges like a, a Project Evoke, if you're not familiar with Jane McGonigal's work, which is a, uh, a large online international game that she put together uh, to solve world problems. So um, this is just one example of a game um, that, uh, that has been quite successful and um, a very interesting project. Jane McGonigal does great stuff. Um, and it's just the beginning. We're gonna see all sorts of augmented reality games uh, where players solve problems. A lot of these problems are global. Uh, they can ev even be local and I'll show you the example that I'm working on now. So this is, this is the example that I'm working on um, or that I, that I worked on. This is a project in Balboa Park in San Diego. Uh, they have a school in the park program there where they take inner city, inner city kids and they bring them into the park. Um, this wonderful building here is where they get to go to school for about three weeks. And the, they go there to um, immerse themselves into the uh, museums and the, the various exhibits uh, that are at, at the uh, Balboa Park. And one of the things that, that we, we did was we created an augmented reality game where they take a, a handheld device and they go throughout the museums and as they hit certain locations, um, they, uh, the, their experience in the museum is augmented. So they may uh, come up to a, a mosaic and point their phone at the mosaic and then they are presented with additional information about that mosaic. It's a little bit more complicated than that and interesting in that they, they read a story uh, and that the, the story is actually integrated into their exploration out in the museums. So the story has to do with uh, China, ancient China and history. So um, it's a folk tale um, that's very well known in, in China. They read that in class and then they go out and they play this augmented reality game and, and get to see some of the artifacts um, that relate to the story. As they go through and explore the various artifacts and, and watch the various videos. Um, they get to solve problems, and by solving those problems, they get to move forward in, in the augmented reality game. We looked at uh, engagement in this game, and it's, a, it's really interesting to just, just draw a quick 
observation in that the students were all incredibly engaged. Okay, they, they walked around with their devices, they were trying to find these various clues in the museum, they were, they were following the story. And, and one of the things that I noticed as we looked around the museum, they had the traditional docent where they had the, the, the guide, and they had students who were going through that traditional experience. And, you know, so you have 10 students for one um, docent. And a lot of the students that were with the docent were not really engaged, you could just tell they weren't paying attention. So this sort of thing has potential, I think, for education and learning. Um, we're seeing devices, you know, things on the iPad and, and tablets where you can augment uh, real objects that are out in the world, like this particular example here where they're augmenting a ship. Uh, you point it at the ship and it, it gives you uh, specific information about things. All right. So I'll wrap up and then I'll let Rosa talk. Um, you know, we're just starting to see this sort of thing um, enter into um, the, our future of education and learning. We're gonna augment lots of things. I think it's gonna be uh, uh, very entertaining and, and exciting to watch. Um, we should start to think about mobile, um, obviously, because those things are with us all the time. And I think it really does mimic the patterns of our learning. We wanna learn um, as we experience things in life. And we wanna, we're on, on and off, on and off all the time. Uh, we need to probably focus more on our customers, all right? When we think about this design, we think about mobile design and we think about augmenting things and really design uh, augmentations that uh, speak to that, to that client. Um, and then the open-ended challenges of some of these games are, are uh, incredibly interesting and challenging uh, to design, but interesting to look at uh, for the future. So uh, I, I actually created a augmentation. So if you do go get the um, application that I was talking about, it's Ayusara, I believe it is, on your smartphone. You, next time you go to Colorado State's logo, go ahead and point it there. And I've augmented our CSU logo with um, a video, okay, of, about CSU. So anyone in the world can...